Hey guys, welcome to part six of the auction. We are on to Kings Eleven Punjab. Nine slots available. Biggest budget in the auction by far with fifty three point two crores. They've let go of quite a few players. I'll name them. Glenn Maxwell is the biggest of them all. Sheldon Cottrell, Mujib, Bill Joan, Jimmy Neesham, Krishnappa Gautam, Karun Nair, and Jay Suchit. They have nine slots left to fill in. Obviously, Punjab started really slow. Then they brought in Chris Gale, and Cottrell was the one to lose out when that happened. So I'm surprised they've let him go. What do Punjab? What did Punjab do wrong last season? And what do they need to buy in the auction? I'll start with you, Greg. I think last year they were just a bit slow to work out what the best balance of the side was. Um, I was very surprised that they left out Chris Gale uh, for as long as they did. Uh, but the turnaround in form um, coincided with his return to the team. Um, I think they'll need to find uh, an overseas um, player to go in the middle order, someone to replace Maxwell, whether they go back to Maxwell at a slightly cheaper price. But I think his good BBL will probably drive up uh, his price. Um, but as you said, he's got a lot of money to spend. Um, so someone in that middle order, whether it's... Um, Someone like Labashain that we've mentioned, or maybe a Shakib in the middle order would be kind of almost like for like for Maxwell, um, would be a good option. Uh, but yeah, someone to fill that middle order. Um, it was obviously got plenty of power at the top with uh, Kale Rahul. Agawal probably sticks at the top and then Gale at three. Um, and obviously Nicholas Puran, who is probably the hottest commodity in franchise cricket at the moment. Yeah, uh, Nakul, do you agree with that assessment that they need to fill in that middle order? Uh, there's no point in them trying to buy any more top order batters. They've already got, they ran into trouble with the um, uh, last year. I actually didn't think it was too much of a surprise that Chris Gale didn't play at the start of the tournament. I think it's almost depressing that, it, that they needed them to go back to him to start being effective because um, ideally you would want, you would have wanted for it to be uh, poor and, and Maxwell and Mujib and then uh, one of the death, one of the potential death bowlers in Cottrell or Chris Jordan but um, Cottrell proved only effective at the top of the order Jordan had a really bad year last year for uh, for Kings 11 we uh, we talked about this when we talked about Darwin Milan uh, on previous editions that um, he's only ever really done well for England uh, in, in T20 uh, cricket and Mujib found himself surplus to requirements after Gale came back in that if you're being hypercritical and if you're being a um, someone who really focuses on the on the metrics, actually, KL Rahul and Mayank Agarwal scored a lot of runs last year, but often quite slowly. Particularly KL Rahul, who really slowed down badly after the power play. But I don't think you're going to change that, and um, you're certainly not going to change it um, in in this auction, um, and unfortunately. Um, so I think that that top four is a lot to then. Yeah, you're looking at someone in the in the middle order. Uh, you you know again, so someone who someone who can provide a seam bowling option. And actually, I think for Kings Eleven, Chris Morris might be a good option for them to go for. Um, we we talked about on the RCB edition that RCB might be looking to buy him back um, cheaper, which gives Kings Eleven some headroom to go for if they want to blow RCB out of the water with a with a bid uh, for for Chris Morris, who can be that power player in the middle order and a death bowler, which they've so badly struggled with uh, in the last few years. Yeah, do you agree with that, uh, Abhimanyu? Do you think that Chris Morris is that person that will be earmarked by Kings Eleven Punjab? Definitely. Chris Morris is a pick that could help uh, Kings Eleven a lot. And I would say if they are not able to afford Chris Morris, they could actually go for Grandom. He is a seamer and a batsman and he could have some firepower down the order. Yeah. And what about someone like uh, Kedar Jadav in that lower middle order? Obviously, we mentioned that, you know, we met, I know we mentioned Kedar Jadav in other teams, but uh, with the amount of experience he brings, I know Nakul has said previously that his time has come and gone. But just because it's that one-year deal, do you reckon it's a punt that Punjab can take, especially with the amount of money they have in their kitty? They can pro almost risk making, taking one buy who could maybe just not work. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it's a slightly safer risk uh, if it's just a one-year deal um, and if he kind of performs for, I don't know, three or four out of the 16 games and provide, uh, out of the 14 games, sorry, as long as you haven't overpaid massively for him, then with the budget they've got, it's probably not a, a horrific risk. Um, I would rather see someone that has is more of a batting all-rounder uh, slot in there. 
Um, I think the the bowling department is fairly well covered. If uh, if we're hoping that Chris Jordan's going to be better than he was last year, um, Ashdeep but uh, um, Ashdeep Singh was a a really good find for them. I think he'll be um, really good again this year. Um, and then obviously Mohammed Shami um, is, makes up a, a lot of the other part of the bowling attack uh, with the two spinners, Murugan Ashwin and Ravi Bishnoi. Um, so I feel a lot of the bowling side is covered. I think we're looking for more of a batting all rounder. Um, to fill that void that maybe come bowl you maybe two one or two overs um, if one of your other frontline bowlers goes around the park at the top. I don't disagree with that, but I don't see that Kedar Jadhav is that guy. Um, and I, the upside with uh, looking at what Kedar Jadhav is, Kedar Jadhav is an accumulator, and he's he's one of those guys who can score quite quickly for one day international cricket and was able to do that for a long time, but he's never been someone with an elite T20 strike rate. Certainly not in that middle order position where you need to start quickly. That's not his game, even when he was at his even when he was at his best. Um, or one guy that in the Greg was talking about the bowlers, um, Ishan Porel is someone who who, who uh, KKR will be wanting a uh, sorry, KKR Kings Eleven will be wanting a lot out of um, this year and could be it could be a very useful um, option. Um, I, I like the idea of Colin de Grondom. Um, and again, going for sort of uh, for RCB um, refugees, Asuru Udana would be another option. Uh, as, uh, as a powerful uh, seam bowling all rounder in that in that lower middle order. Yeah, just throw another couple of names out there. Mitch McLanigan and Nathan Cortenile. Could they be someone that maybe Punjab could look at considering their home? Uh, now, we're expecting the IPL to be played in India. And the expectation is that all teams will be able to play in their home ground. So, considering the pitch in Mohali, could that Mitch McLanigan and Cortenile be an option for them, Nako? Uh, McLennigan, yes, uh, I think absolutely. Um, with, with the fact that he he bowls those hard lengths, and he can get a little bit of movement out of the uh, out of the surface. Uh, Coulter Nile is a curious one because um, uh, Coulter Nile can be um, certainly has a lot of pedigree with the bat, but I think he's a bit unpenetrative with the ball. To be honest, I think he's a little bit line upable, um, Nathan Coulter Nile, and it certainly has been in the last um, few years. So that's why he's lost his place in the in the Australian um, team, but. Um, Somebody with Mitch McLennigan's experience and his experience of bowling uh, tight overs as well. You know, he can bowl at the death, even though it's not necessarily his profile. Um, I think would be a, would be a decent option. Um, also, quite a lot cheaper than Nathan Coulter Nile. Yeah, uh, Abhimanyu, do you see Mitchell McLennigan as someone Punjab could go bid for? Um, yeah, I think so. But the thing is, the lack of playing experience that he had no he had no outing last season for the Mumbai Indians, and I feel that this time it would be a risk. But taking that uh, taking in account that the one year one year deal, it's a one year deal so that could work off. I would I would rather suggest a very different name and away from what we're talking about is Steve Smith, someone like Steve Smith who could add some balance in the middle order and could give that explosiveness back to KL Rahul so that KL Rahul and uh, Chris Gale can open the innings very quickly and because because KL Rahul did not have anyone to depend upon in the middle order last season. So this time, if there is someone like Steve Smith in the lineup, they could have, uh, they could have some explosive starts. That's a... That's a very batting heavy overseas group with Gales yeah. and Uran. Yeah. Um, so then, then you're down to again, um, you know, one of Chris Jordan and any of these overseas guys that we're that we're talking about. It's an interesting idea. I think um, I'd be I'd be wary of anything that pushed Nicholas Puran out of batting in the top four. I think he's a he's a superstar. He's a wonderful player. Um, I don't think it's the worst option, and I think of all of the teams who could pick up Steve Smith uh, usefully, they're actually Kings Eleven are one of the few who could make proper use of him. But again, I think it would be pushing them away from their strengths. Would it also, also, also expensive? Yeah, would it also not be a worry for them that they could be going the RCB way in the 2016-17 that phase when they were so batting heavy that the bowling was left? Basically, they could score 220 runs and still lose a game, and that could something that could happen with Punjab. That they're so batting heavy that the bowling just struggles. I think that might literally have happened a couple of times last year. Um, so, so yeah, it's a huge, it's a huge problem. They were at times horrific at the, uh, at the death. I mean, one game against, I think it was against Delhi early in the season, uh, where um, Chris Jordan, I think Chris Jordan conceded thirty in one over. I think to Marcus Stoinis uh, towards the end of a towards the end of a game, um, and he just looked like he didn't know where to bowl. Um, and this was after Cotter and Shummy had been absolutely brilliant at the top of the order. Um, and, it, and it was, uh, and it was a risk. Um, 
which is why I was I was looking at all rounders who can give you a death bowling uh, uh, option, which is why I put Morris and Udana slightly above De Grandom. Yeah, a question I just like to throw out. Then this is a wild one I'd like to throw out. Obviously, Ravi Bishnoi is young, and he could be groomed by someone like Harbhajan Singh. Imagine if they went out in the auction and they bought someone with four hundred Test wickets. I know, and he's been great in the IPL as well. And they have the budget to outbid others. So why not go for someone who knows the Mohali wicket well? He's played all his domestic cricket all his life in Punjab. Maybe that could be an option for them. Harbhajan Singh, what do you think, Greg? I yeah, I wouldn't be a hundred percent averse to it, but I think the the area we're looking at is kind of the death bowling. Um, someone to kind of work alongside Chris Jordan. I think. Chris John just did have a really bad year last year. I think he's, um, uh, I think he's a, a lot better than a lot of people give him. Well, maybe not that he's underrated, but I think his IPL stints haven't been as successful as we've seen over here for when he's played for Sussex and obviously when he's played for England. Um, I think probably a spinner is probably not the top priority. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think certainly from a, a Ravi Bishnoi point of view, that uh, would be great to have. Uh, someone with so much experience and um, obviously who knows the Mahali wicket. And if Bishnoi is to stay on at Kings Eleven and play there for the next four or five years, to be able to spend six month, six weeks with um, with a bloke like Harbhajan and talk, uh, just spin bowling for six weeks, that'd be absolutely perfect. I think that would be a great move for for the Indian side as well if he's one of the the up and coming spinners for for them. What about hiring Harbhajan as a spin bowling consultant? I think he could do a consultant for anyone. I think um, he's kind of maybe looking for this last, maybe one or two years. He don't to like not like to write these big name great players off too early. But um, yeah, I think we could see him more as a consultant would be a a better option. I would have said. And so, like you mentioned, the fast bowling option. Uh, obviously, what about we mentioned him. A few times now, Shivam Dube, someone who could bat in that lower middle order and give you those two, three overs with, like, he's not fast, but he is that medium, you know, 130, around that 130 range who could give you two, three overs in the middle. Someone as a possible replacement for Glenn Maxwell and which opens up an overseas slot for someone else to get in the squad. What do you think, Nako? No, I don't think that is an option that, that Kings Eleven would profit from. Shivam Dube can give you Two overs, probably, in, in most teams. If he's bowling three, then I think you've constructed your bowling attack wrong, which is, you know, Kings 11 have, so whatever. Um, and I know he has been used as a death option in, in, in the past and has done remarkably well at it. Um, there's one, I think it was against Australia, wasn't it, where he came on and, uh, and took a couple of wickets in a, in a one-day international that no one was expecting. Yeah, yeah uh, I think it was Australia. Um, in, in, 20, Africa, sure. in, in, I think it was Australia in 2019. Um, but that was, that's, it was, seemed to be a bit of a freak, and he's not kind of replicated that since. Um, so, I, I, no, I think, uh, I think Kings Eleven would be... Shivan Dubey will be picked up by, by somebody, and I think will be uh, valuable to quite a few franchises, as we've talked about on previous editions. Um, but I don't think that... Uh, um, but I don't think that he would be the, the good option for, for Kings Eleven. Okay, so yeah, that... I think he's definitely a slot that could get overpaid for. But um, as you said, when he's played for India, I remember in New Zealand at the early part of last year, he was very, very expensive at the death. And yeah. in that series that kept going to a super over, he managed to, to go around the park. Obviously, they are small grounds in New Zealand. But um, yeah, I would not like to see him bowling at the death for my franchise. So if, again, last question, as we always do, I'll start with you, Greg. One player going all out for you on the Kings Eleven camp. Who are you getting? Oh, you've put me right on the spot there first up. Um, I think I'll take a Shaki Bal Hassan. I think he's someone in the middle order that we can have a look at. Um, maybe it takes us a touch spin heavy, but I think we need someone in that middle order to um, complement the, the, the top of the order and would be a nice... Compliment to uh, to Puran with the the power hitting. Uh, what do you think, Abhimanyu? Who would you go for if you're on that uh, camp? I would say I would say Steve Smith and probably someone like Jai Richardson because they have the budget to spend. They they can outbid anyone with the amount they have in hand. So they could go for these two picks and probably settle their eleven, uh, putting them in and probably compete for the championship. Nako? Yeah, we didn't really mention him, but Jai Richardson. Um, you've got the money. You know he's going to be expensive, but he is a 
if not yet world class, then certainly on the way to being a world class death bowler and someone with proven wicket taking ability. Um, go all out for Jai Richardson, uh, particularly on that Mohali track. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see Punjab's strategy this IPL auction because obviously, like we've mentioned a few times, they have the budget to spend. They have nine spots left. So I'm fully expecting this auction to be the most busy for Punjab. I'll be interesting to see if they manage to better their team or just manage some wild picks that eventually just don't work out. So it'll be interesting to watch Punjab and let's see what happens in the auction with them.